In the clean coastal waters of western Sweden, not far from Gothenburg, tens of kilometers of ropes are hanging suspended just under the water's surface. This is a seaweed plantation, a new farming site worked by Gaten Zakrisson and his team. It's the seeding season, and today they are here to plant more ropes with tiny algae seedlings. These are unusual. That's sea lettuce or ulva, an experimental crop not typically grown on farms at sea. This comes from the lab. This morning we are going to put it down in the sea for it to grow here, but it's still already eatable. Uh, so it's pretty nice. It's very small, but uh, it will become about 20, 30, 50 centimeters long, so it becomes a crunchy salad. Every year, more and more such farms appear along European shores, but most of them produce sugar kelp or other more common seaweed varieties. Sea lettuce has more protein and is less salty, which makes it tastier and easier to cook. But its cultivation here remains an exception. The methods of a large-scale production at sea have not yet been fully developed. This farm believes it's on the right track. Since the pilot plantation, over a year they have increased the size 100 times. They expect to harvest 20 tons of sea lettuce in a couple of months. You get your proteins, you get your minerals, and you get a good flavor from the sea, which is pretty cool. I like it. <laughs> this project is backed by the European Union and is deeply rooted in scientific research. Nordic Sea Farm began as a university spin-off. One of its co-founders, Goran Nilund, is a researcher who has been working with seaweed for the past 20 years. The success of open water cultivation largely depends on scientific selection and preparation of the seeding material. In sunnier regions, ulva is grown in tanks on land. But for countries like Sweden, sea cultivation has plenty of advantages. It doesn't occupy valuable land, it doesn't rely on expensive infrastructure or fertilizers and can be easily scaled up. What you have seen in the sea is very much a result of the research we've been doing here. So before when we have worked with, uh, with ULVA, we have never managed to do it at this scale. So we are trying to find the protocols and method to, to have a large scale production of uh, uh, seeding material. This new offer meets the growing demand for more sustainable food alternatives. This lakeside restaurant is one of the many supplied by Nordic Sea Farm with seaweed for their dishes. Thomas Fregrin, a Swedish celebrity chef, used to go to the sea and pick up some fresh algae every morning. But now his restaurant's menu includes farmed seaweed, cultured fish and locally grown vegetables. Wrapped around a slice of halibut, sea lettuce turns into a thin, crispy crust when fried. You both get the flavor from it and the saltiness and the deepness, um, which is super nice and the umami flavor to a, a white fish that's normally quite blend. It needs some flavoring and then to connect it and flavor it with the ocean is, is a beautiful uh, way to do it, I think. Although seaweed is a staple in Asian cuisine, it is relatively unfamiliar to European consumers, but many believe that is about to change. More restaurants are embracing locally grown algae and healthy and sustainable eating remains a steady trend. With an apparent breakthrough in farming technologies, the sector anticipates what they call a blue revolution, shifting more of the food production from land to the sea. Right now it's uh, quite decentralized and everyone is doing their own thing and uh, the regulations are different in different countries. We actually have an idea to make a network of, uh, of uh, certified farms where we can maximize the, the positive impact that we can have and uh, make it easier for the customer to, to choose the right product for their purposes. Further boosting this sector, the European Commission has prepared its Algae Initiative, a set of measures to increase the sustainable production, safe consumption and innovative use of algae. And it's not just about seaweed. Here in Riga, a small Latvian company found an innovative way to produce spirulina, tiny blue algae used around the world as a dietary supplement. Founded by two female engineers and supported by the EU, Spirulina Nord sells algae as a superfood with clinically proven health benefits. It has a very unique uh, composition. 
there's a lot of antioxidants, B vitamins, iron, calcium, and so on, more than 200 uh, valuable uh, elements for our body. Their know-how is a closed system to grow fresh microalgae. It's different from dry spirulina supplements that are often disliked for their strong taste. Fresh spirulina doesn't have that disadvantage. The company mixes its daily harvest with local organic juices and sells them as healthy drinks or syrups. It's really important uh, that uh, people are trying uh, our products because only after trying they understand it's much more interesting, much more valuable, with much better taste. The Latvian company hopes to appeal to urban residents who are health conscious enough to include this rather pricey food supplement in their regular diet. One of the target groups are clients of sport and wellness centers, as well as specialist health clinics that recommend spirulina to their patients. Clinical studies show a number of beneficial effects of spirulina supplements. They can help with fatigue, with inflammations, reduce obesity, lower cholesterol and blood pressure. We know the benefits from this powder and the previous forms and all these benefits are there inside. Now it's time only to look what will happen with this liquid form and how useful it will be in the future. Another promising market is eco lifestyle retail centers. The company sells its drinks, syrups and frozen spirulina at a dozen locations around Latvia and other Baltic states. The challenge is convincing customers that not all spirulina products have the strong flavor of the dry powdered supplement. Most of people have never tried it. And those who has, uh, we usually see in their faces like, oh, spirulina, no, thanks, I don't want it anymore. So then usually uh, reaction is like, oh, it's like lemonade. You are saying there is algae, really? Some of the regular clients are men leading a sporty lifestyle, but most of the customer base are women. What we see at the moment that 90% uh, are ladies in all ages, uh, but young moms especially. Uh, young moms need to go to job and afterwards play with kids, uh, make dinner and do everything. So they need this um, energy boost in the evening. The company says it's ready to scale up production as more customers find algae to their liking.